do that for you. Look to our Lord in prayer. And the direct us as we look at his word. Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We're grateful for thee in your presence. Help us as we look into your word. We might uh, receive your counseling. Continue to guide us throughout our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to talk about the glory. How God is glorified in your life and mine. You have to understand what the church is. Uh, the church is you and I individually. Yeah. We come together collectively to form the ch church. Of course, we have a physical building. And the physical building is here. It's where the church meets. Mm. Chalk. I'll give you a piece. They have a lot on the other side. Amen. The church, the church building is where the church meets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the church is a organism. Yes. It's a body of people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that have been called out of the system of the world, called into the kingdom of God's dear son. Yes. Notice the kingdom of God's dear son means that Jesus is king, so therefore we become obedient to the king. He gives us commands to follow, and he helps us in those commands, to follow those commands. So wonderful to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13. the message of Hebrews, the whole of Hebrews. Hebrews shows us that Christ is our intercessor. Right, right. That's what Hebrews shows, Christ our intercessor. We need someone to intercede for us, and that's Jesus, he is Christ. As a matter of fact, he is continually working mm -hmm. in you and me, working for you and me, even yeah. though he has done his work here on earth, he is still in heaven interceding. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, says, Seeing then we have a great high priest who has gone into the heaven, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Then uh, the Bible invites us to come boldly to the throne of grace. And we learn from the Bible that this throne is a throne of grace. Yeah. The throne of grace, we, we go there to find help. Come to the throne of grace. First of all, we obtain mercy. And we find grace to help in time of need. I need him. Here's how I need him. I like to diagram the need. I started out in faith. That's how I need him. Just continually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at some things day. God glorified by, he's glorified by working obedience in us. Never forget, the church, it says a living organism, what God has done through his son Jesus Christ. He has given you and me as believers in Christ, mm -hmm. he, he has given you and me the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit at work in us through faith that we are allowed to make. Try to do it in your, try to live the Christian life in your, of your own accord. You see, boom, <laughs> you can't do it. That's right. It's not designed for you to do on your own what Christ has already done. We have to, that's where the faith system comes in. Mm -hmm. The just shall live by faith. faith. How does faith come? Hearing. Faith comes through hearing the word of God. God's word. Hearing God's word, when we hear God's word, we come obedient to His word. Why do you have tribulations and 
stress. Well, given to you and me so that we can depend on God. Yeah. That's why it's good. Jesus said to us, he's honest, in this world, notice this world, you shall have tribulation. He said, but take courage, be of good cheer, I will come. Why did Christ suffer so much in this world? He did not suffer because of sin. He had no sin. Neither was any God found in his mouth. His suffering didn't come through sin. He suffered because he was obedient to God in the midst of all this chaos. He did the Father's will. What did the Father say about his son? This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. What did he say about you and me? Before we became believers. He wasn't pleased. He said, you and I became sh had, had become short of the glory of God. Jesus didn't come short of the glory of God. He was the manifestation of the glory of God as he lived on earth. That's why he had so many problems because the earth tried Satan in who controls the earth to try to uh, try to get Jesus to walk contrary to his Father's will? Yeah. That's what the temptation is all about. Matthew, the third chapter, and the fourth. That's what the temptation is all about. And Satan couldn't. Uh, he couldn't. Well, he tried hard to get Jesus to do his will, Satan's will. But Jesus refused to do Satan's will. He says, "My Father." His will, I don't want to do it. it teaches us something. Yeah. That as believers in Christ, we started out as, a, as new creatures in Christ. And uh, now I don't have any, any racing. Okay. Everything's gone. And a meeting, a lot of things happen. Yeah, just, it looks nice and clean in here. God gave you and me. That's good. I don't want to ever forget it. He gave you and me as believers his spirit mm -hmm. to dwell in our hearts through faith. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians 3 that Paul says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. <coughs> through faith. You're being rooted, grounded in love. You want us to comprehend, understand uh, God's will. That's what brings about a change in our lives. So let's look at uh, in the Sunday school. I have a few minutes. Hebrews 13. Yes. I just want you to remember a few verses that help help us all week. Hebrews 13. Remember that Hebrews. Yeah, 13. Hebrews 13. Remember that Hebrews portrays Christ of our intercessor. You and I can always go to. Lord, to the Lord for help. We need him in this world. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 13 uh, verses this is a benediction and also a final exhortation. See the Bible exhorts us. Exhortation it gives us uh, direction. And not only does it give, it give us direction but he helps us in that direction. Amen. 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 So we have to really have to learn to depend on Jesus. So in the 20th verse, two verses here, listen to the Bible. And may the God of peace, I want you to notice something. God always gives his children peace. When you read in the Bible, and especially the letters, always watch the salutation. Peace, grace, peace, multiply to you. That's grace, that's God. That's God's doing in His Son. Mm -hmm. Amen? So a Christian, literally Christian, go down, shouldn't go around his head, bow down in, the, in a depression if we understand the scripture. Lift up your heads. If you understand scripture. Of course, a person doesn't understand scripture. He or she walks in his or her own way, so therefore it brings about depression. Because it's too hard. You hear him talk. Oh, the Christian, Christian life is so hard. I cannot 
I can hardly make it wrong if they don't understand the gospel. They don't understand the gospel. Because listen to listen to the Bible. Now the God of peace. who brought up the Lord Jesus from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete. What is the term? Make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you. See that? What is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We read that slowly. Did you did you get the gist of what I'm saying? Let's just think about it. You read these words, uh, if we understand, as we read those words, it, it is saying to you that we have help. In the church, over the years, I have seen and observed folk who didn't understand the gospel. You know, those preached some just don't grasp it. It's preach, it's clear. But some just don't grasp it. And I, I started investigating. I said, now why is there some among us that don't grasp it? The reason for that, they did not remember their creator in the days of their youth. So they came up in a religious order. You hear what I said? In a religious order. And it's very difficult to break the habits <coughs> of what you're formally taught. Mm -hmm. Formally taught. If you have been taught something, let's say, 20 years, 30 years, and you hear the gospel, new. If you don't grasp it by faith, you won't get it. Even though you go through the act. Yes, sir. And the act is, you hear it. The act is, uh, you hear it. It's clear. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel is Christ. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. That's clear. What some have a tendency to do, they keep that 20 years mentality. Mm -hmm. And they go through that. They baptize for the remission of sin. They hear it in the Bible. Then they go back to mind. <laughs> their mind said, well, I gotta pick up some some uh, some law back here. You know? I thought I was taught it. Do you understand the human mind? What you basically taught, you never forget it. Right, yeah. What did you first learn when you when you started the school? Alphabet. What about the alphabets? Right, yeah, alphabet, yeah. What do you do with those alphabets? Make words. You made words. What do you do with those words? Make sentences. You made sentences. What do you do with the sentences? Paragraphs. Paragraphs. What do you do with the paragraph? Well, <laughs> you can you learn that? I know you learned it because I was going through it. You would give it to me. Do you think you ever forget that? No. No. You don't forget the words. You, you don't forget the alphabet. Sometimes we, we learn the alphabet backwards. Go forward and backwards. Even sing it. You remember? You never forget that. Well, the same way with the doctrine you have been taught. Before you get to, get to the doctrine of Christ, that same doctrine, you don't forget that either. Brother Matthew, yes. I was worse than 20 years. I was 40 years. 40 years, okay. And, and that's why I couldn't read more than 
10 to 15 pages at a time yeah. because I understand what I read. Yes. And what I was reading was telling me that I was all wrong in my thinking. So I had to read and close my book. <laughs> you know, I couldn't take it. See what, I couldn't yeah. take it at one time. That's right. See, you have to be honest with yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. I came up religiously reading the Bible, even preaching it. <laughs> I didn't understand it because my conscience said something is missing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was until the gospel came to me and it was taught. It wasn't the Bible said. No one can come to God except they what? Except they they be taught the word. They be taught of God. Taught of God. Then you are found. You can read it for yourself. John the sixth chapter. And the verses. 45. Jesus said, no man or no person can come to me except the Father who sent me draw him. That's what the way. But it is stuck there. Folk who don't know the way, they put up here. No one can come to God except God that draws him. But it, the Bible, the same Bible tells us how God draws. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's written. Don't have to guess. You don't have to guess how we come to God. First of all, to come to God, you must be taught. Uh, how are you going to know where you're going if you're not taught? Mm -hmm. School it teaches us, you know, in different disciplines. Amen? If you're going to the School of Engineering, you're taught uh, the discipline of engineering. One thing, if you don't, if you don't uh, like math, don't go to engineering. Uh -huh. That's right. right. <laughs> if you don't like to read, don't go to engineering either. If you don't like to work, you know, hard work with your mind, don't go that way. As a matter of fact, any discipline, if your mind is not made up to accept that discipline, don't go. Right. Because uh, you become, if you're not careful, you become depressed in the discipline. But here's what we find. Think about it. Look at it again. I just want you to keep in mind. Now, Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. <coughs> now, may the God of peace, I read it from the New King James Version, who brought up the Lord Jesus from the dead, who was raised from the dead. Right? A great shepherd of the sheep. He's a great shepherd of the sheep. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and so forth, and he does what? He restores my soul. You see, if you want some psychological help, <laughs> we're going to talk about psychology. If you want some psychological help, then the Lord does it, the work. In, the, in Psalms there, he restoreth my soul. Right. He's the one who restores our psyche. Mm -hmm. Because the word for soul in the great New Testament is the word suke. It's P is spelled P-S-U-C-H-E. That's where you get the word. That's where you get psychology from. And suke simply means translated soul. You know what psychology is? Dealing with the soul? Mm -hmm. Mind? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? It's all in the Bible. A little over a hundred years ago, it became a discipline in the schools. And he took it. Everybody, now the preacher and everybody got to see the psychologists, other psychiatrists. Where was the psychiatrist when Jesus was here? In the Word. Where was the psychiatrist and the psychologist when the apostles were here. Where were they? The word of God. Where were where were they? Uh, what, what about the mental state before Sigmund Freud? Oh, yeah. See, we have to think. It's Jesus mm -hmm. is the only one 
Masela, Jesus is the only one that can give rest to the soul. Yes. Why? Why? He created the soul. Yes. Right. He created the soul, created you and me. He's the only one who can give counsel That's to right. you and me. That's right. I'll just come along and they, they, they give you some human counsel. And guess what? They have to go to a human counselor to get some counseling. I hope don't know that. But uh, we have a, see what the Bible is telling you, me. Uh, we have a what? What is verse 20, 20 say? We have what? A great shepherd of the sheep. And what's the function of a shepherd? To lead you. Yeah, to lead. Then Jesus said, I, come on, I am Divine. the way. Oh, the way, okay. I am the way. Mm -hmm. The way. I am the, the truth. truth. The truth. I am the light. The light. The light. The only way. The you what do you say? Yeah. We quote him about being here. What does he say? He's saying he's the he's only way. Yes. The one come to the Father. Yes, yes. that's true. Which is contrary to what some people say. Yes. There, there are many ways. Well, yes. The job if, to see, he can quote that, not here. Uh, if the shepherd's job is to lead and he's the way, then he's where you're going to be led to. Listen to him again. I am the way. What do you hear? He's saying, there's only one way. way. It's only one way. I heard there's only one way. That's it's true. The way, not That's a way. Right. That's right. Something else there, too. He's not showing you a way. He's he said, I am. Did he, did he come to show you the way? No. He is, he is the way. He's showing you <laughs> You're getting it. He is the way. Yeah. And we have to use a word for that. He is the embodiment of the way. He doesn't tell you, go here, go here. He's just follow me. Yeah, that's right. But you have to listen. He said, that's the way over there. No, oh, it's over there, over there. No. He says, follow me. I am. Follow me. Why do you say follow me? Because, because he's the embodiment of the word. Yeah. I had to try to understand it myself. <laughs> he is the embodiment of the truth. He didn't come and say, I'm going to tell you the truth. He does that, yeah. but he says, I am the truth. Yeah. The other man goes, I'll tell you yeah. the truth. Mm -hmm. I will show you the truth of written, but no one can say, I am the truth. Only one. Say, I am the truth. I'm the embodiment of truth is Jesus. And then, too, he is the embodiment of light. And that's why the Bible says, Life is in his son. Now, listen to the scripture. Listen again, 20. May the God of peace, you hear that? He's a God of peace. Mm -hmm. We use a word for peace. Uh, you heard it yesterday when I was calling all the saints. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that word I use? Mm -hmm. Or was it? About peace in the spirit? You mean to, I use the word of tranquility, and I said, Christ is the only one only to give way. you and me tranquility. tranquility. Yes. Tranquility is another way of saying peace. Peaceful. Yes. Yes. Okay. Order the spirit. Observe, if you would observe Christians who really understand the whole the God of peace, that person who has accepted the tranquility that only Christ can give, that person's, watch that person, observe that person's spirit calm. You, you say, well, why don't she get disturbed and upset? Well, understand tranquility. Tranquility means the God of peace is working 
inside of us through his Holy Spirit. Well, the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Fruit of the Spirit is long suffering. Love. Joy. Peace. Joy. Peace. That's why I say peace. Mm -hmm. That's the fruit of the Spirit. If you and I have the Spirit dwelling in us, we become the most peaceful persons in the world. And that's why Jesus said, Let your light so shine before men, that's a human being, that they may see what? Your good works. And glorify, glorify your Father which is in heaven. Because the Father who is in heaven through His Son gives us peace. Say that again. God in heaven through Jesus, His agent, gives you and me peace. The Holy Spirit is granted to you and me to produce the fruit in us that we can't produce ourselves. That's why I say the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruit of Brenda. That's right. Fruit of Jane, not the fruit of Brother Thomas. Right. Fruit of the Spirit. That's right. Fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of. I say it many times. We get it. Fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. well, what is it that causes Christians to walk contrary to the Spirit? Spirit what, what, what causes that? They're not letting the spirit guide That's them. right. They're trying to go on their own. On their own. So yeah. we call that the works of flesh. That's right. Works of flesh is when a person goes on his or her own. Yeah. Right. You know when you're doing it, too. You know. Sure. <laughs> flesh knows what it's doing. Yes, it does. That's where the problem of depression comes and despair comes. That's right. Here. Mm -hmm. The spirit all comes through the spirit. The spirit gives what? Peace. Peace. Tranquility. You see the calmness? Don't you want to be calm? I do. Amen. In the midst of all the confusion. I was a public service for all 37 years. If you don't have some peace, these folk will run you crazy. Because they know they know more than you do. And people say, I pay your Sorry. Mm -hmm. I tell him, I said, I'm a taxpayer too. That's right. Give me the part that I pay. <laughs> oh, I thought about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, something. Some focus, something. I'm not talking about Christians. Christians have what? That's why I love the church. When I come among my fellow believers, I expect to find tranquility. What about you? When you come upon among your fellow believers, don't you want to find tranquility? Yes. Don't you want to find peace? Yes. Certainly. That's where the hope comes in. All right. You hope now, you find. <laughs> now, now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord from the dead. See, Christ is raised. Uh, through the power of his father. His father gave him power. I have, he said, I have what? I have power to do what? To lay down my life. I have power to take it again. No man, no person takes my life. That's right. They thought they, they, thought they, they, thought they were taken. The crucifixion, they thought they was taken. They right. laughed at it. But he came back from the dead, right? Yes. He's a God of peace who brought up the Lord from the dead. The great shepherd of the sheep through the blood. Here's what you're not even excuse me. Through the blood, watch this now, of the everlasting covenant. We have an everlasting covenant. Yes. We have to be worrying about, I wonder. Is God going to change his mind tomorrow? Or going to change his mind later on today? No. We are under an everlasting covenant. Right. <coughs> and the covenant, excuse me. Something about this building get me some time. Do you have any water in the office? Yes. Maybe I can make it. <coughs> you want me to get it, Brother Matthews? I can get it for you. Oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
Sprayed. Amen. So much for that. But here's what the Lord does for you and me when we're in Christ. Verse 21, this is what he's doing. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Make you perfect in every good Make work. Make you perfect in every good work. In every good work. To do his will. To do his will. That's see? Right. You see what? He wants you to get it. Make you perfect in every good work to do his, his will. will. Notice what the next verse <coughs> Excuse me. What are the next words? Working in you. Working in you. Come on. That which is well pleasing that in his sight. Which is well pleasing in his, his sight. Mm -hmm. We live to please God. <coughs> in my English. <laughs> Say that again. I said in my English, we live to please God. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's right. We all get it? Right, yeah. That's why we are Christians. We're living to please God. Right. Yeah. I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead and create shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you complete in every good work to do His will working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. See, if we understand the gospel, we don't, we don't ever give glory to ourselves. Amen. We give, always give glory to Christ. Do you hear it? We give glory to Christ and what he has done and what he is doing. <clears throat> now we go from time to eternity. You can grasp it. God is to be glorified and magnified. And what do you mean by magnified? What is when you magnify something? What make do you? Bigger. What happened? Huh? You make. You can see it bigger. Oh, okay. I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said it. Yeah. You almost said, make it bigger. Right, I saw it. I heard you. I remember. <laughs> but Brother yeah. Dean said, you know, make magnification that make things bigger. That's right. Make things appear. Yes. Yes. Larger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, man. Magnification make things appear larger. Yes. Put a bug under the microscope. Big. Appears That's large, right. but moving from the magnifying glass, the same yeah. size right? Words. So remember that when we magnify the Lord in our lives, our lives make the Lord appear yes. larger than yes. the words can express it. But actually, God is bigger than we can understand, so we take the bigger things and try to bring them into the concepts we can understand and make them smaller. I like that. Say, say that again slowly. I said God's bigger than we can really understand. So we bigger than we can really understand. Bigger than we can really understand. Condense them into those concepts we can. That's what we are doing. Uh -huh. Kind of condense them in a little. But can we do that? No. Nope. We can't do that. So we, so we, we, so we give glory to the Lord. That's yeah. why. When we give glory to ourselves, can you imagine giving glory to yourself? Who are we? Without some help. Nothing. We are, I tell you what the Bible says we are. Nothing. Without some help. We are sinners. Right. And the Bible says all yes. <laughs> have sinned. Right. And come what? Short. 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 short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3. If we come short of the glory of God, then God is not pleased with any of us in and of ourselves. Right. God knew we needed help. When he looked down from heaven, what did he see? 
He didn't find one righteous. No, not one. Hey, think about that. It's God's verdict. Look down upon human being. He didn't find one, yeah. not even one righteous among human beings. So that should tell us something, right? Yeah. He knew it was a problem. It tells me that I need some help. Mm -hmm. I'm in bad shape with all the Lord. Yes. I need some help. Lord, help me. So what the Lord did, He had already. Was working, he's already been working in eternity. That's why Christ is a, is a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. He's already worked it out in eternity. That it's executed in time. But God worked out in eternity and were executed when Christ walked on earth. Jesus Christ is declared to be the Son of God with power. This is what the gospel is all about. Paul preached it. He says, I declare unto you the gospel of God. The gospel of God concerns his son. That's Romans 1. Jesus Christ our Lord. Made of what? The seed of David. According to what? The flesh. He says he declared to be what? The son of God. How was he declared to be the son of God? Paul makes it plain. The resurrection from the dead. The resurrection proved that Jesus was and is truly the Son of God. Think about the resurrection. Yeah. That means Jesus died, he was crucified by human beings. Got up. And the resurrection means he stood up again. That's right. right. To die no more. To die no more. So if he stood up to die no more, where is he now? In heaven. No, no. That's what we say. Sitting up there with the Father, right hand. Think, think about this. God. You think about heaven. That's too far beyond us. Yeah. Where is he now? Where is he now? He's right here with us right now. Where he's is in he? us. Where he's is in he us. Now? As Christians, he's in us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Don't you ever forget it. Mm -hmm. I'll say he's with us. In us. He's in us. That makes a difference. Yeah. Christ dwells in you and me. Mm -hmm. How? Through the Holy Spirit. Through faith. Through faith. Not believe. Yeah, Through that's faith. Right. That's right. You, yep. you and I have to believe yes, that do. Christ is dwelling. Yes. And we show that we believe by right. how we walk. walk. Thank you. Behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> how we walk. Behavior is going to show whether or not you believe that Christ is in you. Yeah. If you and I believe that Christ is in us, when we come among each other, what do we produce among each other? A disturbance? No, love. What do we produce? What is produced through us? The tranquility. Tran that's what should be produced because the fruit of the Spirit yeah. is producing right. in you and me what we can produce ourselves. Right. And it take away our fears too. <laughs> Remove fears and doubts. Oh. That's a lot. It's something you think about when you think about the gospel. Mm -hmm. All right. Any question? A few more minutes? Yes. Think about where we are in the midst of, we're in the midst of time and space, right? Mm -hmm. In the midst of time, that's where I have our watches, clocks on the wall of time. Time is not ticking. Time is flowing. And it's flowing rather rapidly, too. You celebrate your birthday, how many years you've been in the world? And do, you think, do you think it's a long time? <laughs> I don't think anybody say, I've been here for a long time. Seems so short, doesn't it? Yeah. We're in the midst of time and what else? Space. Mm -hmm. Usually, we don't observe these things like we ought to. We're in this room here now. What? We asked the person, what do you observe? Mm -hmm. Observe in this room. Somebody would say lights, electric lights, or somebody, chairs, and floor, the ceiling. First thing you should observe is what? What should you observe first? Space. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? What you the object you're saying, they occupy in space. Right. I hadn't thought about that before. 
I'm walking. I walk toward you now because there's space, but if Brother Dean's getting in front of me. Really? He's blocking your space. <laughs> he can't walk. I can't walk through him because right. he's occupying space That's and I'm right. occupying space, right? Mm -hmm. right? I can only walk in my space, move movement in my space. That's, right. That's something to think about. You go to New York City, I mean, and you're walking on the yeah. sidewalk, and people passing by, yeah. a lot of people, and you, you got your space, and you move, move yes. into it. Yeah. That's amazing right. me, to me. That's like, all of these folk. Yeah. And I have my space, and I'm moving in my space. It's about to get in my way, then boom! That's what accidents are caused, right? Someone tried to occupy somebody, somebody else's space. Else. The same, same space. The same space. <laughs> same space, same right? Space, you and right. I can't occupy the same space That's right. at the same time. Mm. Those things we uh, usually we don't think about. So we think we in time and space. God is to be glorified in and through our lives. That's how He's glorified in and through our lives. He's glorified through your life. He's glorified through my life. He's glorified in my life. He's glorified in your life. Think about it. Now here's what 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 31. Re look at verse 31 of, of 1 Corinthians 10 and 31. 1 Corinthians 10 and 31. It says, the gospel, I want you to understand, the gospel is comprehensive. And what I mean by that word comprehensive, in school you remember about comprehensive exams? <laughs> you heard that, right? Comprehensive exam? What do you expect? A whole bunch of stuff. What do you expect in a comprehensive exam? You have a certain discipline. It's going to be covered everything in that area. Thank you. It's going to cover everything in you... that area. Go on over, comprehensive. The gospel is comprehensive. Yes, it is. What I mean by that, the yes, gospel covers all Everything. areas Everything. of our lives. That's right. Whether we realize it or not. Yeah, yeah, it does. Now watch this. Don't forget it. First Corinthians 10, 31. Say, it's comprehensive. Watch 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink of whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Isn't that comprehensive? Yeah. Start off with eating. We like to eat, don't we? We like to drink too, right? It's necessary, it's essential that we do it, right? He says, therefore, whether you eat or drink of whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. <laughs> That's something they want. That's comprehensive. That's, That's comprehensive. A comprehensive statement. <laughs> All areas of our life. That's right. We got to bring glory to God. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, isn't it? That's something to think about, isn't it? Yeah. And there's some benefits if we do that. Yes. yes. Always. <laughs> Brother, Brother Dean says benefits. You know what benefits? The meaning of benefits? What's the meaning of benefits? Good. Good. It's, it's, it brings about good. That's right. Benefit. Listen to the Bible. David understood it. Psalms 103, verse 1. He says, David understood God's benefit. He said, bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then he names some of the benefits. You ever, you ever watch it? You're looking at me. I think we got time. One, Psalms 103. Let's see what he said. I'll read it from the New King James Version. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, plural. Mm -hmm. Now here's some of the benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. He forgives your sins. That's a benefit. 
who heals all your diseases. That's the benefit. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. See that? See those benefits? Good. That's a good thing. God is good. Yes, He is. He gives you benefits. He, he blesses you. <laughs> he blesses you and me. Uh, so we, with benefits. Our sins are forgiven. Aren't, aren't you glad you're, your sins are forgiven? Mm-hmm. Aren't you glad? I'm glad my sins are forgiven through Christ. Through what Christ has done. He died for Let's make it personal. He died for my sins according to what? According to scripture. We have to close. God glorified by working obedience in us. Remember that the Holy Spirit works in you and me bringing about those things that please God. Comprehensive. Whatever you do, eating, drinking, or whatever, do all to the glory of God. Because He works in you, in you, and me. Let's pray. Father our God, we're so grateful for the benefits that you have given us through Scripture. Yes. We thank you for giving us an understanding. You're the God of peace. You're the one who makes us complete in every good work do your will, you work it in us, that which is well pleasing, and you do it through Jesus Christ, your son, whom you have given to us, Lord, we love you for what you have done and what you are doing in our lives, we give you the glory, forever and ever, amen. 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 amen.